Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the First Baptist Church of Gibsonton, Florida. What an amazing group. Please listen as they sing for us. go to the baptismal pool with Pastor Clemens. He's preparing and the candidates are also. Let's welcome him to church this morning. All right? Pastor Clemens. Good morning, everyone. What a wonderful way to end a really good year in our church. 2019 has been a good year for all of us here in the church. and We've cried together some and we've laughed together some. But uh, here we have two today following the Lord in believer's baptism. And I'm so thrilled to be able to have this last Sunday of the year uh, to see these two following the Lord in obedience to God's command to a Christian to be baptized. This morning we have Vicki Busby. Vicki, have you placed your faith and trust in Jesus Christ? And you received him into your heart as your Savior. Yes. Upon his divine command then to baptize you, I do this morning baptize you. In the name of the Father, the Son, the blessed Holy Spirit of God. Amen. 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 I got you. I got you. I got you. You all right? pick you up, so you're, you're on your own. Turn right around here. James, have you received Jesus Christ as your Savior? Yeah. Put your hands together right hey. now. No, put your hands together. Okay. Hang on to my arm. Have you received Jesus Christ as your Savior? Yes. You've asked him to come into your heart and be yes. your Lord. Give the people your name. Um, Alberto Antonio Pomare II James. All right. Did all of y'all get that? <laughs> and God's got it wrote down in the Lamb's Book of Life. James, upon God's command to baptize, I do today baptize you. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Blessed Holy Spirit of God. Amen. 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 So much, Brother Mel. That's amazing. It is. Praise <laughs> the Lord. Thank you. 
That's good. Thank you, choir. Let us all be a larger choir now as we sing together the notes and the words on number 99, please. Angels from the realms of glory. Singing at least verses 1 and 2. Let's all stand together, those who can and will. I know some can't, but here we go. Angels from the realms of glory. First time in a long time, we consider you guests. If you're uh, in that category, please raise your hand so our uh, handsome ushers can find you. No, Buddy's not one of our ushers, but he can help if he would like. He said he would do whatever the Lord wanted him to do. All right, as the ushers find our first timers, first time guests, if you will, use that new pen to fill out that little card that came with it. Please put the card later in the service. We'll pass our offering plates. Put that little card in there for us so we know how to communicate with you. And if you may take that pen and you'll have the phone number at least to the church so you can communicate with us as you see fit or as the Lord directs. Another announcement would be, and I've got a long list of stuff here, and I don't know if i got enough breath to do all of it or not, but I received a Christmas card in our church post office out in the hallway and I am blessed by that but it's also a reminder that as I look through that stack just about all those little cubby holes in the post office are full so you need to stop by there in the foyer it's just right behind this big wreath on my left here on the outside there in the foyer if you'll take those cards that'll be very helpful we need to clean that out before Easter Yes, Pastor Tim. If I could just encourage you with a word concerning our little post office box. I went by there the other day, and I went through mine, took them home, and started opening them up. And you may want to check your mail because I found a check. <laughs> I'm going to look at mine again. <laughs> Praise, Praise the Lord. Uh, fantastic bulletin art this morning. Thank you, workers and staff, for doing that. On the inside is a separate sheet of paper that has a lot of information on it that you need to participate in, a lot of activities. Uh, Chuck Wagon Gang coming pretty quick. Uh, the Nealons will be here before long. But before all that happens, we're having a revival meeting, and it's starting this morning, I feel the spirit of revival anyway. All that's in the calendar for the new part of January, so you be sure and keep that. It's a very important, expensive piece of paper. Other announcements in the program are, in red letters down there for you, we will be having a New Year's Eve service of fellowship in our fellowship hall across the parking lot here. That will be on uh, Tuesday evening, if I understand all this right. And they will have finger foods, I believe, after the little service we're having, so you participate in that. 
uh, the other things in here. Down at the bottom of the bulletin there inside, it says, Ladies Bible Study. The date was to have started on Tuesday night the 5th, but because revival meeting will be going, the McCloskeys will be here, we're going to wait uh, until the next Tuesday night for that group of ladies. There's also a group of ladies meeting Wednesday, and I can't keep all that straight in my mind, but it's in the program, it's on the calendar. So ladies, participate. Keep it straight for me, all right? Thank you. I believe I've covered all the announcements. Oh, there will be church tonight. We have some who are going to bring some special music for us. Pastor has some interesting things he wants to share with us out of the Bible, I'm sure. There will not be, or is it tonight? No fellowship, no food after tonight. No food after the service tonight. You've got to go home and eat or fast. Hey, that's a good idea. Good scriptural idea. Fast this evening after church. All right. You'll sleep better. Uh, let's see. I think I've taken care of all that. We need to get back to singing, and let's do that. But before we do that, let me pray. And I also want to welcome Phil and Glenda Platter to our service this morning. <laughs> Haven't seen them in a long time. We've heard about them, and we see notes about them. But it's so much better to see you in person and have you. And welcome John, that young man sitting with them this morning, John Burton. And I'm looking around. Oh, I better not call too many names. I'll be in trouble. But so good to see all of you. Those who can and will, let's stand together and sing Away in a Manger. Welcome back. <clears throat> Good to have all these people playing instruments for us this morning. This is great. Away in a manger, no crib for a bed, the little Lord. Jesus laid down his feet. The stars in the sky look down where he makes it so much easier for you to sing. And now this fantastic choir again singing for us. But before they sing, <clears throat> I want to welcome Sister Frida back this morning. She's our organist and hadn't been here in a while. So good to see her. And of course, Tommy and Ida and William and Joy Beth, and all those who play instruments are fantastic to help us in our worship this morning. We're going to sing about worshiping, and if you know the words, you're welcome to sing along with us.
you. One more week I get to say this, and then I'll not be able to say it for a while. But a reward to our choir is no rehearsal this afternoon. We're going to start up here pretty quick, though, at 5 o'clock on Sunday afternoon. So hang in there, choir. Let us all sing together the words to Silent Night as we think about a holy night, particularly, I don't know if it was silent or not, but uh, a holy night and worshiping Jesus. As we sing together, the notes are on page number 85. Thank you, instrumentalist, and for everyone singing. Testing. Testing. the ground cry Jesus saves Jesus saves the world of sin rejoiced to hear the sound that Jesus saves Jesus saves even the soul
and the deliverance. Father, we do come to you again this morning with thankful and grateful hearts for all that you do for each of us. Thank you for allowing us to sense your power and your presence through the Holy Spirit this morning. Ask your continued guidance and strength upon Pastor now as he comes to stand before us. Help each of us to open our hearts and minds, Lord, to the message you have for us. In and through the power of Jesus' name, amen, amen. Bless you, Pastor Clint. All right, thank you so Bless very, you, very Bishop. much. What a wonderful service, amen? I feel like, you know, I could probably, with just that beautiful music, I could just, uh, just kind of say, Brother Mel, come and give the invitation, we'll go home. But the only problem with that, the deacons would probably want to cut me half a pay. <laughs> and, uh, uh, but anyway, it's good to be here this morning, isn't it? Amen. It's just good to be in the house of God and to finish up this wonderful year here on this last Sunday morning, uh, to be here together and just to be able to worship God and thank God for all that he's done. I know we've had some tough times through, all of us have, through the past year, but God has been good. God has been so good to us and blessed us so marvelously and, and so wonderful. And um, uh, Miss Mary Brandon, too, we wanted to make sure she's been in the hospital. And uh, good to have her back in the service. Mary, God bless you. <clears throat> I received um, a Christmas card, and, and it was a wonderful little note. And from our live streaming, uh, so many times, you know, we're here and we don't realize what it is to be shut in at home. And I received some notes and calls over the holidays from those shut-ins who said, thank you so much for the live streaming and for the being able to still be a part of the church and see the services on Sunday morning. And I got a a beautiful note and card from Brother and Sister Dominguez, Dr. Dominguez and his wife, um, thanking us they're unable to come and to be in the services. Um, I talked to Miss Rosie Jones, and she watches it every Sunday. Hello, Miss Rosie. And um, so she wanted me to say hello to her. And so I have, and Francis, Grooms, all, and many others who watch our services. And this is the only opportunity they have to have church and to be able to be a part of the services because of their inability to come and to be out uh, publicly and to be here. So again, we're grateful for the ministry that God has given us here at First Baptist Church, Gibsonton. This morning I want us to move just beyond, if we could in just a few moments, just beyond the birth of Jesus Christ. We begin to think about his purpose in life i read for you this morning the first verse of chapter 1 of John the Gospel. And here we read that in the beginning God, in the beginning was the Word. So you know what? Could we this morning, and I am just going to take the liberty, and I think it would be perfect liberty, could we just put the word Jesus where we see the word Word? All one and the same meaning. But I, help, I think it helps us just a little bit. In the beginning was Jesus. 
And Jesus was with God. And Jesus was God. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that powerful? You see, Jesus did not begin in Bethlehem of Judea. Jesus was always, and this is something that goes beyond the comprehension of mankind, is something that calls into effect faith. I do not understand something that has no beginning. I have a hard time comprehending that, and I know maybe you do too. But God had no beginning. Jesus had no beginning. He always was. So Jesus did not have his beginning when he was born in Bethlehem of Judea of his mother, the Virgin Mary. He always was. The mother of John, I thought it was so interesting, these to be noted, that the mother of John the Baptist, which, which was Elizabeth, and she conceived about six months earlier and, and bared John the Baptist, and that was a miracle birth also, but we won't go there this morning. But um, whenever Mary came to visit Elizabeth, knowing that she also was expecting. When she walked into the room, Elizabeth said, the mother of my Lord. What a startling statement. Think on that just a little bit. Here, these two ladies, relatives, if you will. But yet, when Mary walked into that room, she immediately knew that Mary was carrying the Son of God, the Savior of all mankind. And Elizabeth looked at her and knew that she was carrying her Savior, Elizabeth, her own Savior. Today, you and I, we have celebrated the birth of Jesus Christ and the reason we've done so is because He is our Savior. To all who believe in Him, to all who trust in Him, He has become their Savior. There's something else that is said and I wanted to use in my introduction this morning. But over in Luke, chapter number 1, verses 41 and verse number 44, something that needs to be said from the pulpit in every pulpit in America, Elizabeth referred to Mary and to the child that she was carrying. Twice in the scriptures, she called Jesus in the womb a babe. Not a fetus, not a mass. But she called that babe. And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutations of Mary, the babe, the word of God, calls that conceived child in that womb already a babe. America and around the world, but in America, we talk about Herod. I wasn't going there, but I'll go there with your permission. We talk about Herod killing all of those babies two years and younger. I can't imagine that scene. Soldiers marching into homes and gathering up those little two-year-old boys and under and taking a sword and pistol right through their heart. That's terrible, isn't it? but it was no more terrible than what we're seeing happen today. When they take the scalpel and pierce it into a young babe in the womb. So here we find that God's word called the babe in a womb a baby. May we not forget that. I know there's a big effort being made today, and I know Donna is help, helping to head, head it up in our church to get an amendment upon the Florida Constitution to make abortion illegal. And 
we need as Christians to get behind that and to help that to become a reality here in, the, in Florida. But I wanted to speak this morning, what kind of a man was Jesus? What kind of a man was he? Oh, we've talked about him in the... By the way, get to, look at this all you want, because after today, you, it's going to be gone. But he's not, he, we've talked about the babe in the manger. We've sung about the babe in the manger. We've preached and sung about the wise men and the shepherds. But as Jesus grew, what kind of man was he? He took on humanity when he came to this earth. He became a man among men. He was a man who was strong. He was a man that when he went into the temple, over in Matthew chapter 21, the Bible says, he went into the temple and physically cleaned house. He was not no weakling. He was a man. He was a man among men. He enjoyed, I think, observing and viewing the beauty of his creation. He went up on the mountaintops. I don't want to encourage any of you to leave town. Stay in town now. But he would go up on the mountain with his disciples. And no doubt, I'm just kind of ad-living a little here now, but give me that opportunity and privilege. No doubt he would get up there on the top of those mountains and he'd begin looking over the scenery in the vast creation that he had made from the beginning when God created the heavens and the earth. No doubt he would look about that and probably smile and see the beauty of the creation that he had helped to make. This is the man, the man Christ Jesus. He enjoyed, I believe, in his creation, probably getting in that little boat with his disciples, going out on a little fishing trip. Don't any of you get any ideas? Stay home, stay home. But he'd get in a boat and, of course, the disciples... They were not thinking like he was thinking, but I imagine in his own mind, he said, I created all of this. I created the fish that the disciples are catching. I created the land. I created the waters that we're on. You see, he was a creator. He was the great creator. i tell you something else I think. He was as a man. When God became man, I think he enjoyed the meal and the fellowship that he had with his disciples, his family. Spent time with them, and we have some occasion in the Word of God where, you know, he even cooked for them one time. Well, I bet that was good fish, good old fried mullet. Oh, man. Grips. You know they had to have grips. But he enjoyed his creation. He created it all. Amen? He created it. What kind of a man was he? Well, he, he was the kind of a man that but he was a man among men. He didn't have to back up to anyone. He was strong. He was raised in a carpenter shop lifting probably heavy timber, lumber, making and building, grew to be a very strong man. But then in his maturity, as he enjoyed the things of his wonderful creation, we're talking about what kind of man was he. He was a man that never wavered in his devotion 
to the Father. Not one time. I wish I could say that. I can't. And I suspect none of us can. But here was God in the flesh. He became a man. But what kind of a man was he? He was a man that was so devoted that he never, he never had an unpure thought. Can you imagine? Living in this old world that you and I live in. Again, I wish you and I could say that, but we can't. Because he was sinless, and I must admit, I'm a sinner saved by the grace of God. He was pure. He was sinless. He faced all of the trials of life. Everything was thrown at him. Can you imagine? You see, the Bible said he was tempted in all manners as we are. And sometimes I think we misunderstand maybe the, the real thought and meaning behind that. Everything was thrown at him but it never tempted him. Everything was thrown at him. Satan threw everything he could at Satan to try to get him to sin. But he never had an unpure thought. I'm sure he, Satan pranced, if I could say this, he pranced beautiful women before him. But he never had an unpure thought. I'm sure that in many ways Satan threw everything he could to try to get Jesus to somehow commit some sort of sin. But he never did. Thank God he never did. You see, if, if one time, if just one time, Jesus had, had succumbed to the temptation of humanity, he could not have died for my sin or for yours. But he was the sinless, eternal Son of God. So Satan threw everything he had at him. I know Satan throws a lot at us, all of us. And you know, we're weak, but he is strong. Aren't you glad today to know that we have a Savior that bore all of our sins upon the cross of Calvary. Aren't you glad today to know that he lived a perfect, sinless life? Even though Satan did everything in his power to try to get him to succumb to the desires of humanity, the flesh. But I'm so glad to be able to tell you this morning that he never committed one sin. He never had a sinful, unpure thought to come into his heart and mind. Jesus said this. He said, I have come to do the will of my Father. Now, when I think of Jesus, what was many purposes and what we see in the Bible, he become an example for all of us, didn't he? he? He became the ultimate figurehead for all of us to look to and model our lives after as believers. And Jesus Christ said, I've come to do the will of my Father. Could I say to you as we get ready to begin another year, we're ending up one, but it needs to become the desire of every one of us. I want to do the will of my Father. And I want, there's an old song, I want to do thy will, O Lord. We need to sing that every day in our hearts. We need to let that begin to be the theme of this new year for our church our church family, all of us. I want to do the will of God. I have made a determination, and I just say this to challenge you to join me. I want to live closer to God this year than I've ever lived before. 
And you know what? It'll be a battle. Satan will throw everything he can at all of us to distract us, to cause our minds to become unpure, to get our attention away from serving God, living for the Lord, be pleasing unto God. But we need to do exactly what Jesus did when he said, I've come to do thy will. The day we were saved, from that point on, we become a part of the family of God. We become children of the highest. Think about that. We have a heavenly Father who now claims us as his own. What a high honor. What a great and high honor to be called by God and say our name that we're his children. Do you realize how great and wonderful that is? To have Almighty God say, that's my son. That's my child. They belong to me. And you and I need to be in awe and so gripped by those words, realizing what Jesus Christ has done for us through coming into this old world. Do you realize or do we realize what he left to come here? Have you ever thought about it? What he left, the beauty, the throne of God. The Bible says he sits today at the right hand of the Father. But he left that. He left paradise, a sinless, beautiful place, angelic beings everywhere, heavenly music, everything at his disposal. And he left it all for me and for you. And then he invited us, you and I, to come into his kingdom, to become part of his family, to realize, he said, if you'll accept me, if you'll accept me as your Savior, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll make you join heirs with me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'll you become part of the heritage of God. Do you know that's exactly what we are this morning as Christians? We're part of the family. We're part of the heritage. And the world now, what I'm trying to lead up to, what the world looks, and are they seeing what God wants them to see through his family, <coughs> excuse me, through his heritage. You see, I know we're not perfect in, in the eyes of man, and we're not perfect in our own eyes, but thank God we can be perfect in his eyes. But here's the key. Are we doing our best? If we face another year, are we doing our very best to live close to the Lord? To do even as Jesus said, I've come to do the will of my Father. I want that to burn in my heart from now on till Jesus comes. Oh, it always has, but I, I want it to burn deeper. I want it to burn stronger than ever before because I realize, you know, uh, I'm looking around. All the young, well, we've got a few young people left over here. Some of them went to junior church. These folks over here, some of them, yeah, they still don't realize how short life is. But most of us are beginning to realize how short life really is. It won't be many years and most of us will be in paradise. Nothing bad about that, amen? Nothing wrong with that. But till we get there, 
How are we going to live? Till we get there, what are we going to do? What are we going to leave behind? I hope and pray that when I leave this earth, I can leave behind a good legacy, a good reputation spiritually, a life that somewhat honored the Lord. Could that be your desire for this new year? Could that be what God could lay it upon the heart of our church? Jesus put his life into the hands of the Father. And that's exactly what every one of us needs to do. I was talking I was, uh, to a salesman this week in a grocery store. It wasn't a car dealership. It was a grocery store. I was talking to this salesman, and he happened to know me. Every time I go into the store, he comes to me and just greets me and talks to me a few minutes. And um, he said, you know, we go through a lot of trials, don't we? And he knew he knows something about me my situation with Patty. I said, yeah, but I said, remember this, young man. I said, everything works together for good. Everything is working together for my good to those who love the Lord, to those who are called according to His purpose and will. Oh, we go through some trials, but see, we don't see the big picture God does. One day we'll understand it all. We'll understand it better by and by. So I say to you this morning, put your life, every one of us, let's make a commitment here as we end this year that we're going to begin a new year putting our life into the hands of the Father and trusting Him and walking with Him and living for Him and being committed to Him and be able to say, I've come to do my Father's will. Let that be our life. He was committed to doing his part. We all have a part. Now Jesus was committed to doing his part in saving all of the world. I can't do that. You can't do that. But you know, we all have a little part. We all have a little part to play in God's eternal plan. Think about that. God has given each one of us a part to play in this big program that God is putting on. Think about it. I've got a little part. Oh, I don't need a big Hollywood part. I just need a little part. Just a little, just a little phrase, a little piece, a little time on God's stage, if you will, where multitudes are watching and listening to every move we make, every word we say. We're on a stage that the world is watching. And we need to be careful. See, Jesus was committed to doing his part in saving all of the world and all of those who come unto him. Could we do our little part and helping to magnify the cross, helping to draw people's attention to the Lord Jesus Christ, helping people to realize that there's something better than what they have in this old world, eternal life. I go back to my scripture of last Sunday morning, and I'll close with it. For God so loved you and I, that he gave his only begotten son. That when we believed in him, he gave to us eternal life. You see, God did his part. Jesus did his part. He went all the way from Bethlehem to the cross. He didn't miss a step. Oh, we may miss a few steps along the way, but we need to be 
we need to be realized, and we, were, we have a little part to play on the eternal stage of life. People are watching you. They're watching me. They're waiting on us to mess up. Amen. Oh, the devil would love for the preacher of First Baptist Church Gibson to get into sin. That'd give the community something to talk about. And the devil would certainly like that. And I'll say this. The devil threw everything he had at Jesus, but he failed there. But he'll also send everything and throw everything at you and I. We do not need to fail. Oh, we're weak, but he is strong. Could we this year say, Dear God, I want to do thy will, O oh Lord. If you're here today without Jesus Christ, you're on the stage. You're watching. Everyone is given an opportunity to hear the message. Jesus loves you. Jesus died upon the cross of Calvary that, so that whosoever will may come. You say, oh, preacher, I've done a lot of things. Well, that's why he died for the, on the cross, because he knew we were going to do a lot of things sinfully. So you can come this morning freely, knowing that your sin debt has been paid for. All you need to do is come to receive the gift. Would you do that today? If you're here without Christ, if you've never been saved, we invite you to come to the Lord Jesus this morning. Trust Christ. Let him come into your heart, give you a new life, new purpose for living. And for Christians here this morning, could you join with me today in saying, Lord, I want to do thy will. I want to do, dear Lord, your will in my life. I want to live for you and serve you. I want to walk closer to you than I've ever walked before. Maybe many this morning would like to come as we stand together for the invitation. Father God, we pray this morning to just speak to our hearts. God, that we might have a greater desire to live for you and to serve you to be the people you'd have us to be. There's one here this morning without Christ who's never been saved. Dear God, may this be their day, their, the day of their birth. We pray in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Brother Mel, you come. Just as I am. Just make your way. Just come right on. God bless you. Others, if we can pray with you, let me know. If we can pray with you, just please let me know. If you want to come and pray, the altars are here, they're open, come on. Make your way. Just before we sing the next stanza, just before, just before, Brother Mel, just before we sing the next, is there anyone, do you know this morning, could you say, if I left this earth today, I know I'd go to heaven. Is there anyone here this morning with any doubt about that? If you're not sure, certain, positive, why don't you come this morning? Say, I want to know for sure that I'm going to heaven. That's why Jesus came to this earth. Will you come? Let's say.
so much. You may be seated. Ushers are coming. God bless all of you to come this morning to pray. May God be with you and strengthen you and help you in your prayers. God has been good to our church this year. And I want to thank all of you for your faithfulness. We um, set a new record. We will by today have set a new record in so many ways this year in our church. I've got some things I want to say probably New Year's Eve. And I'll share, but I want to hold it back. But over the years, last four or five years, we've come through some trying times in our church. And in this year, it's been the year, it looks like that we've kind of blossomed back out. Things that we had no control over, but boy, it hit us hard. Our offerings this year are greater than they've ever been in the history of our church. And I want to thank you and for the Lord's behalf. Missionaries are being taken care of. The ministry is strong. Thank you for what you do. Thank you for what you give. Father, thank you for the offerings of all of God's people. We give you the praise in Jesus' name. I've had many tears and sorrows. I've had questions for tomorrow. There have been times I didn't know what to do. But in every situation God gave blessed consolation that my trials come to only make me strong. Sing it, children. Through it all. trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God. Through it all, through it all, I've learned to depend upon His Word. I thank God for the mountains. And I thank Him for the valleys. I thank Him for the storms He's brought me through. For if I'd never had a problem, then I'd never know that God could solve them. Why, I'd never know what faith in God can do. Through it all, through it all, trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God. Through it all, through it all, I've learned to depend upon His Word. Through it all, through it all, I've learned to trust trust in God through it all through it all I've learned to depend upon His Word yes I've learned to depend upon His Word Young people and buddy. Listen, um, the offering envelopes, if you've not, we've moved them into the lobby there so we um, have a better opportunity to see and remind you if you haven't picked yours up for next year, they're available in the lobby as you go out. Again, thank you. We will have services tonight at 6 o'clock. Plan to come and be with us. Looking forward to a good service. And then our, our New Year's Eve service, of course, will be at 6 o'clock on Tuesday. And everyone is invited to that also. So make the plans to come and be a part of all that's going on here in your great and wonderful church. Father, thank you for this day. 
Thank you for your blessings. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.